18th Air Force Air Forces Transportation 18 AF is the only numbered Air Force NAF in Air Mobility Command AMC and one of the largest NAFs in the United States Air Force. 18 AF was activated on the 28th of March 1951, inactivated on the 1st of January 1958, and reactivated on the 1st of October 2003. 18 AF is headquartered at Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. Topic Overview. As AMC's sole NAF and the Air Force's largest NAF, 18 AF is responsible for the command's worldwide operational mission of providing rapid, global mobility and sustainment for America's armed forces through airlift, aerial refueling, aeromedical evacuation, and a global air mobility support system. 18 AF presents Air Mobility Forces to combatant commanders through its role as Air Forces Transportation AFTRANS, the air component of United States Transportation Command. The 18 AF commander also acts as the commander, Air Force Forces COMAFFOR, and Joint Force Air Component Commander JFACC, when so designated. The command's mobility aircraft include the C-5 Galaxy, KC-10 Extender, C-17 Globemaster III, C-130 Hercules, and KC-135 Stratotanker. Operational support aircraft are the VC-25 Boeing 747, Air Force One, C-21, C-20B Gulfstream III, C-32A Boeing 757-1, C-37A Gulfstream V-2, C-37B Gulfstream 550 and C-40B Boeing 737-3. 18 AF has an assigned military and civilian workforce of more than 37,000 personnel. Topic: Units. Units reporting to 18 AF include 11 wings and two stand-alone groups. The 618th Air and Space Operations Center, Tanker Airlift Control Center, located at Scott AFB, also reports to 18 AF and serves as the organization's Air Operations Center, planning and directing tanker and transport aircraft operations around the world. Other AMC units assigned to 18th AF are Topic History Topic <inaudible> Origins <inaudible> 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 When the Army Air Forces AAF reorganized in 1946, Tactical Air Command TAC was established as one of its three major commands. The AAF X Troop Carrier Command TCC was inactivated as part of this reorganization and 3rd Air Force was reassigned to TAC to control the troop carrier units formerly part of X TCC. It was headquartered at Greenville Army Airfield, South Carolina. The C-46 Commando and C-47 Skytrain were the primary troop carrier aircraft, but surplus C-54 Skymasters that had been originally purchased for the Air Transport Command ATC were made available for troop carrier use. Third Air Force was inactivated on 1 November 1946 and TAC's troop carrier mission was reassigned to 9th Air Force which moved to Greenville. 
In 1947, many of TAC's troop carrier groups, wings were assigned directly to Headquarters TAC with the rest to the Air Defense Command's 14th Air Force Reserve 302D Troop Carrier Wing. The theater troop carrier mission was expanded rapidly during the Korean War when many of these reserve units were called into active service and assigned directly to HQ TAC. Topic: <laughs> Cold War 18 AF was established and activated the 28th of March 1951 to discharge Tactical Air Command's TAC troop carrier responsibilities. The organization became operational on the 1st of June 1951 at Donaldson AFB, South Carolina, and initially assumed control of nine medium. C-119 Flying Boxcar Troop Carrier Wings 314th, 375th, 403d, 433d, 434th, 435th, 443d, 514th and 515th, seven of which were Air Force Reserve Wings called to active duty during the Korean War. The command added a heavy C-124 Globemaster wing, the 62nd Troop Carrier Wing, in fall 1951 and another in early 1953, the 63rd Troop Carrier Wing. In the spring of 1952, 18AF C-124 Globemasters were sent to Japan and by July 1952, C-124s from the 22nd Troop Carrier Squadron were flying missions in South Korea. The arrival of the C-124 introduced the aircraft loadmaster position to the troop carrier mission. As the Korean War wound down, C-119 flying boxcar crews from the 483rd Troop Carrier Wing began supporting French operations in Indochina. United States Air Force supplied C-47 Skytrain and C-119s were placed on loan to the French Air Force at Tehran Air Base. By early 1953, the Air Force Reserve Wings were replaced by active duty wings organized, administered, equipped, trained, and prepared for combat by 18 AF. Augmented troop carrier forces in the Far East and Europe provided trained crews and replacement personnel to units in the Korean War. The next year, 18 AFC 119s from the 483rd Troop Carrier Wing and flown by civilian crews employed by Civil Air Transport airdropped supplies to besieged French paratroops at Dien Bien Phu, Indochina. Some 483rd personnel flew missions in an unofficial capacity and would play key roles in the troop carrier mission in later years. After the Battle of Dien Bien Phu, 374th Troop Carrier Wing and TAC C-124s airlifted wounded French soldiers out of Indochina to Japan. The command also took part in joint exercises and provided support for airborne paratroop training all the while working to improve communications capabilities and to advocate for the inclusion of medical air evacuation in joint exercises. 18 AF also provided airlift support to other Air Force major commands and TAC organizations. The advent of the Jet Age saw TAC with a new mission, as it became the focal point for a new military philosophy based on the rapid deployment of heavily armed fighter, bomber units and Army airborne and light infantry units to overseas trouble spots before conflicts could escalate into full-scale war. 
18 AF units supplemented Military Air Transport Service MATS airlift when needed and transported U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force units for training and deployment. The Korean War illustrated the need for a medium transport capable of operating from dirt airstrips, which led to the development of several new transport aircraft, including the delivery of the jet prop-powered C-130 Hercules at the end of 1956. 18AF also took deliveries of the Fairchild C-123 provider, a twin-engine transport designed for assault operations into rudimentary landing zones. With the advent of the C-130, TAC established the Composite Air Strike Force, commonly known as a CASF, which was centered on troop carrier C-130 supplemented by MATS aircraft to deliver personnel and cargo at a moment's notice to support TAC fighter, bombers at overseas destinations. With these new aircraft, 18 AF units rotated troop carrier units to Europe in support of NATO. The command was heavily committed to airlift operations in Arctic areas beginning in the fall of 1952. Between 1955 and 1957, the command offloaded and airdropped equipment supporting the construction of the distant early warning line, Dew line radar system across northern Canada. Helicopters of the 310th Troop Carrier Squadron, operating from two icebreakers, provided support airlift to the U.S. Navy in the Heron High Precision Air Navigation project in January 1956. The command provided airlift and airlift expertise to the U.S. Navy in Antarctic Operation Deep Freeze I and II, establishing a base at the South Pole. Crews of the 63rd Troop Carrier Wing performed the first airdrop at the South Pole in October 1956. A combat controller of the 1st Aerial Port Squadron performed the first parachute jump at the South Pole in November 1956 in order to determine the necessary corrections for ongoing airdrops of equipment. 18 AF also provided airdrop and airland support to Alaskan Air Command and Northeast Air Command, from March to early June 1957 in order to establish similar sites on ice islands in North Polar regions. The command was also instrumental in the development of the aerial port concept, including techniques and equipment for loading troop carrier aircraft and the airdrop of cargo. 18 AF airmen also developed the Air Force Pathfinder combat controller capability to establish ground-to-air communications and navigation aids at jump sites and to select landing sites. They also carried out fixed-wing assault missions using C-123 aircraft for landing on small unimproved landing areas. The command organized the first rotary assault group in the U.S. Air Force before losing the mission to the U.S. Army and served as advisory body for reserve troop carrier wings. Finally, the command was also heavily involved in the testing of new aerial delivery equipment, equipment and techniques for dropping paratroops and cargo, and navigation devices to determine point of release A realignment of troop carrier forces in 1957 led to the reassignment of 18 AFC 124 wings to Mats and its headquarters was moved to James Connolly AFB Texas on the 1st of September at the same time, Donaldson AFB was turned over to Mats along with the C-124s and 63 DTCW assigned there. 
At Connolly, the command gained responsibility for TAC's day fighter, fighter bomber, and aerial tanker operations on western U.S. bases. 18 AF was inactivated effective 1 January 1958 due to budgetary reasons, and its units were reassigned to 12th Air Force which had been reassigned from U.S. Air Forces Europe at Ramstein Air Base, West Germany to James Connolly AFB. <laughs> Air Mobility Command 18 AF was reactivated on 1 October 2003 as part of an overall AMC reorganization to improve air mobility support to warfighters. Born from the consolidation of AMC's 15th and 21st Air Forces under the leadership of Maj Gen Bill Essex, AMC's Director of Plans and Programs, the command had a modest restart. By the time LT Gen William Welser III was finally confirmed as commander a mere two months after reactivation, the 18 AF headquarters staff numbered 30 of which more than half was the legal office. At that time, every AMC wing and independent group reported to the 18 AF, including the newly designated 15th Expeditionary Mobility Task Force and 21st Expeditionary Mobility Task Force, AMC's lead agencies for conducting airlift, air refueling, aeromedical evacuation, and expeditionary combat support operations worldwide. This meant that a single commander, the 18AF commander, had tasking and execution authority for all air mobility missions. It became quickly apparent that in order for the command to effectively oversee the global air mobility enterprise it would have to grow and develop strong relationships with key organizations across the Air Force and United States Department of Defense. From the start, the command's leadership ensured strong lines of communication with Sister NOFs, the AMC staff, Air Force Reserve Command leadership, United States Transportation Command, and counterparts in the other military services. Strong communication was also a priority within the command. We visited every unit in the NAF to ensure all members of the command family understood their role in our mission success. This included integration of Air Reserve component advisors and visits to Air Force Reserve Command and Air National Guard units to ensure they were fully integrated into war fighting team. Visiting other service units also paid huge dividends in the joint fight," said Welser. Building on a foundation of strong internal and external communication, 18 AF leaders next focused on evolving the command's role to present air mobility forces and expertise to combatant commands, particularly United States Transportation Command. In November 2005, Maj Gen James A. Hawkins, a former 18 AF vice commander, took the reins of the 18 AF. Under his leadership, and that of his successor, Maj Gen Winfield W. Scott III, who took command in June 2008, the command continued to evolve to meet complex missions at home and abroad. One of the most demanding of those missions came when Hurricane Katrina made landfall on the Gulf Coast in August 2005, eventually causing more than 1,800 deaths and nearly $80 billion in damage over an area of approximately 90,000 square miles. 
From the initial response through recovery, 18 AF airmen were part of a massive total force team that flew more than 300 missions that moved nearly 1,800 sick and injured hurricane victims to safety and airlifted more than 4,000 tons of relief supplies to the stricken area. A mere two years afterward, the command also flexed its muscle overseas with the deployment of approximately 1,500 mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles to Iraq in only four months. The increasingly complex nature of the command's mission, evidenced by global demands such as these argued for a second rebirth of the command, which was soon to come. These changes occurred on 6 January 2011, when five units transferred from the 18AF to the command of the United States Air Force Expeditionary Center at Joint Base McGuire-Dix Lakehurst, New Jersey. Included in the transition were the 87th Air Base Wing at Joint Base MDL, the 628th Air Base Wing at Joint Base Charleston, South Carolina, the 627th Air Base Group at Joint Base Lewis McCord, Washington, the 43rd Airlift Group at Pope Army Air Field, North Carolina and the 319th Air Refueling Wing at Grand Forks Air Force Base, North Dakota. The 18AF commander, LT Gen Robert Allardyce at the time, retained operational control of airmen in these units a control 18AF retains to this day, but the change reduced his administrative burden, allowing him greater focus on the command's worldwide mobility flying operations. The need for that focus had become obvious over the years, reflected in a doubling of the 18AF's headquarters staff between 2003 and 2010. During the same time the headquarters also added operations and plans directorates as well as an integration cell to leverage other key AMC staff members performing operational tasks supporting the command's mission. While the 2011 restructuring was one of the most visible elements of an evolutionary process that enhanced the 18AF's operational capability, it was far from the last. The following year the command went through one of its most significant restructuring efforts to date. In March 2012, the 18AF inactivated its two Expeditionary Mobility Task Forces, the 21st Expeditionary Mobility Task Force at Joint Base McGuire-Dix Lakehurst, New Jersey and the 15th Expeditionary Mobility Task Force at Travis Air Force Base, California. These inactivations administratively aligned the task force's subordinate units, the 615th Contingency Response Wing at Travis, the 621st Contingency Response Wing at Joint Base MDL, the 515th Air Mobility Operations Wing at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, Hawaii, and the 521st Air Mobility Operations Wing at Ramstein Air Base, Germany under the U.S. Air Force Expeditionary Center USAFEC. The following June also saw the inactivation of the 615 CRW, with the alignment of its subordinate units under the 621 CRW. While the changes reduced the administrative demands on the 18AF commander, they still left him with full operational control of AMC's forces. LT Gen Mark Ramsey, then 18AF commander, noted that the changes represented a more effective and efficient way of carrying out the command's global air mobility mission especially the planning, exercising, execution, and assessment of airlift, air refueling, and aeromedical evacuation operations in support of combatant commanders across the globe.
Since then, the value of the command's continual evolution has been validated by multiple crises and contingencies, each of which has in some way reflected the elements of speed, safety, and success. The ethos represented in 18 AF's emblem. In the wake of Japan's 2011 earthquake and tsunami, the command successfully and quickly orchestrated efforts transporting hundreds of tons of humanitarian relief while assuring the safe return of thousands of military families back to the U.S. simultaneously, within hours of the passing of a Security Council resolution, AMC tanker units rapidly formed the 313th Air Expeditionary Wing a total force, Calico Wing, so named for the variety of aircraft tail flashes from the different units that constituted it, to support the U.S. Operation Odyssey Dawn over Libya, which later became the NATO Operation Unified Protector. All this occurred against the backdrop of the massive movement of personnel and equipment from Iraq. Since that time, the command has continued to rapidly respond to crises across the globe whether delivering relief supplies to Americans stricken by Superstorm Sandy, moving troops and equipment in the face of provocations by North Korea and Syria, or supporting international efforts battling extremists in Mali and the Central African Republic. At the same time, the command has undertaken the massive effort of redeploying equipment and troops from Afghanistan in just a few years. <laughs> <laughs> Lineage Established as 18th Air Force Troop Carrier on 7 March 1951, organized on 28 March 1951. Redesignated 18th Air Force on 26 June 1951. Inactivated on 1 January 1958, activated on 1 October 2003. Reorganized on the sixth of January, twenty eleven. Topic Assignments Tactical Air Command, the twenty eighth of March, nineteen fifty one to the first of January, nineteen fifty eight. Air Mobility Command, the first of October, two thousand three present. Topic Components Topic Divisions Forty two D Air Division, the first of October, nineteen fifty seven to the first of January, nineteen fifty eight, Bergstrom AFB. Texas 831st Air Division, the 8th of October 1957 to the 1st of January 1958 George AFB, California 832d Air Division, the 8th of October 1957 to the 1st of January 1958 Cannon AFB, New Mexico 834th Airlift Division. The 1st of October 1957 to the 1st of January 1958 England AFB Louisiana Topic Wings Topic Groups 309th Troop Carrier Group the 8th of July 1955 to the 2nd of June 1956 detached the 8th of July 1955 to May 1956 assigned to Ardmore AFB Oklahoma USAFR C122 C123 topic stations 
Greenville AFB, later, Donaldson AFB, South Carolina, 28 March 1951. James Connolly AFB, Texas, the 1st of September 1957 to the 1st of January 1958. Scott AFB, Illinois, the 1st of October 2003 present. Aircraft assigned